the Boeing 737 MAX. For sure you know that aircraft type. It was grounded for around 18 months. And back in March of 2019, no one knew that this aircraft will not be flying for such a long period. After two crashes of Lion Air and Ethiopian, this aircraft was revised by many of the aviation authorities, by airlines, by pilot unions, and of course, by Boeing company itself. Not speaking about the investigation. And now we have the new version of aircraft. It has new software. It has minor changes in construction. It has new procedures for pilots and of course it has new requirements for pilot training. But pilots around the world, not only pilots but flight attendants and passengers, just wonder if this new Boeing 737 MAX, the updated version of Boeing 737 MAX, is safe airplane to fly. Today we are going to answer or try to answer that question. Hello my friends and welcome. My name is Dennis and I'm Boeing 737 captain. Let's go. Bum, bum. All right, my friends, I'm not good at drawing. I know it. But let's say this is Boeing 737 and G. Yes, now we're gonna speak about Max, but first let's speak about Boeing 737 and G. It is one of the safest airplane ever produced. Of course, it had the history of some of the crashes, some of the pilot mistakes were done piloting this airplane. But it's the airplane that I fly and I know the statistics. It is the mo one of the most produced airplane in aviation history of commercial aviation. And of course, it's one of the safest one. It has the similar statistics with Airbus A320. What they did with Boeing 737 NG? They decided to make the fourth generation of Boeing 737 and they call it MAX. They put bigger engines, more efficient and they move it a little bit forward. That is why we have some kind of excessive pitch moment sometimes. If you put this axis over here, put the lateral axis, you have the pitch. So if you have excessive thrust, that will increase your, that may increase your angle of attack. The angle between the airfoil cord and between the ear. So now it's around, let's say, four degrees. If you rise the nose up, like here, you will have greater angle of attack. The greater angle of attack you have, the more lift you have. It's good from one side, but you are approaching to critical angle of attack, which is stall. So after alpha critical, you have the stall conditions, which is not very good if you want to fly the airplane safely. You have this pitch up moment on every aircraft type with this design, with engine mounted under the wings. On Airbus, on Embraer, on Boeing, 737 on Boeing 777 Airbus 350 doesn't matter. You always have this pitch up moment. But on Boeing 737 MAX it was just a little bit higher compared to Boeing 737 NG. And that means that the airplane would have been handled in different way than Boeing 737 NG. And here comes the problem. Because of the difference in controllability over the lateral axis, the pitch controllability, the new type rating for NG pilots might have been required. The new type rating means extra ground training and extra flight simulation training as well very long training actually and that's extra money for airlines but it was never an issue for previous generations for example I used to fly the Boeing 737 Classic which is the second generation of Boeing 737 and for me to fly the Boeing 737 NG the third generation I need just to pass 
several days of the ground training and several sessions just as I remember three sessions to have the validation to fly the Boeing 737-NG so everyone wanted to avoid the extra type rating for the pilots let's just go through the ground training we don't need the simulator sessions and let's fly this aircraft let's make this airplane to fly as previous generation the Boeing 737-NG and that is why we need to compensate this excessive moment so for example for NG it was like this for Ma Boeing 737 MAX it was much greater or a little greater nobody knows only designers know and they decided to do something with uh, this part this is stabilizer the horizontal stabilizer and also we have the elevator here this thing is the airfoil that is used to control the airplane pitch during the flight it's your normal control so we need to compensate this moment and that is how MCAS was born MCAS that is the biggest problem of Boeing 737 MAX not the design in general this thing the MCAS stands for maneuvering characteristics augmentation system and the idea was is just to push the aircraft yes I have this toy to show you the idea was to push the aircraft nose down if it is encountering the high angle of attack values so if the angle of attack is high let it be like this alpha is high if the autopilot is off autopilot is off and the flaps up up the MCAS start to change the position of the stabilizer adding extra moment to compensate the excessive pitch of this engine design if it feels the high angle of attack it start to move the stabilizer 2.5 degrees per one time if it feels that the alpha the angle of attack is large again it start to move it so the continuous indication of high angle of attack will lead the stabilizer to go full forward so we have the stop trim move to full forward position there are no any limits for that okay so if you have problems with angle of attack detector which is on the nose on the forward fuselage part of the airplane if it will fairly gives the high angle of attack to MCAS the MCAS will constantly move the stabilizer until the nose dive and here we have the chain of bad design I'm Boeing 737 pilot and I love my airplane but I admit that with this design the first design of Boeing 737 MAX they did it wrong so if you have the bird strike if you have I you know wiring problem with the angle of attack if it senses the high angle of attack it will just go down the nose of aircraft will uncontrollably go down uh, if you use the main electrical trim or located on your yoke you can overforce the stabilizer you can overforce the MCAS but later on if it continued to sense the alpha the high values of the alpha it will start to put the nose down again and that what happened with the line air crash what pilots should do in this case basically you need to disconnect MCAS with the stabilizer there are two switches in the cockpit and by selecting them off you disconnect the MCAS and main electric trim and autopilot trim with the stabilizer and there you can control the stabilizer trim manually speaking about two crashes of Boeing 737 MAX Lion Air and Ethiopian sadly to say it but if you read the official investigation result you will find out that it's not only the problem of this bad aircraft design it was also problems with pilot training and pilot mistakes the crew didn't follow both of the crews they didn't follow the normal the proper normal procedures 
to disconnect the switches and the line air crew they didn't disconnect them the FLPN crew they disconnected first and later on were unable to trim the stabilizer manually and set them on they set them on again probably I'll film one more video about it but here let's continue with our topic <music> As you know, the aviation industry is very regulated one and also it is very safe. But it is not ideal because we are humans and we do mistakes. We write bad documents, we design bad aircraft, we fly in a bad way because we are not ideal, we are not machines. So we have some kind of holes like in Swiss cheese in everything that we do. Let me show you the Swiss cheese accident cause model. It is a very simplified model just to show you the idea. So we have some kind of hazard. We have big engines to be installed on Boeing 737 and G that will create huge moment. That is why Boeing decided to install MCAS on their aircraft and FAA approved it. So we have faulty design and that hazard goes by Boeing go through the Boeing. At that point FAA may have revealed this situation and decided that no guys you should uh, design one more angle of attack sensor just to have the independent indication for that NCAS system. By they, but they passed this thing afterwards. Training. They decide why should we have extra training for that design. We shouldn't even put information about MCAS in flight crew operations manual. And let's go to the pilots. Pilots. Yes, we have some of the training on previous model of Boeing 737NG, but pilots as humans may also do mistakes, especially if you have two feathers at the same time, airspeed unreliable and stabilizer run away. So that is what MCAS was doing with stabilizer. It's just stabilizer run away. So if pilots at this point will do the failure, it will go to the crash. Crash. How can we avoid that to happen? We may build extra layers because there they have the holes and they will have holes because the system is not ideal. It's not ideal everywhere. Even nuclear reactors sometimes explode as in Fukushima or here in Ukraine, Chernobyl. So disasters happen. So every, every layer has its own holes. You need to close this holes. You need to close as much holes as possible. There still will be holes, but you need to work on that closer. And also you need to identify the hazard and share the information about it. Share it with Boeing, share it with FAA, training, pilots, with everyone. Because we need to fight this thing. We need to put holes in different way, not letting this hazard to go and cause the crash of the airplane. As one more example, there was the catastrophic accident with Boeing 737NG in Rostov and Don, Russia with the Fly Dubai Airlines. So the case was that the pilots did the go around and it was Boeing 737NG, not the MAX, but still we have the engines mounted under the wings, so we have excessive pitch up moment. To compensate that, usually you use the trim and stabilizer, but you use stabilizer little by little. But captain at that moment he pressed the main electric trim, he just jammed it, and the stabilizer moved full forward making the aircraft to dive nose down. Later on they hadn't had any forces to pitch up the airplane again. They lost the altitude and hit the ground. So that is example of good aircraft. The good aircraft design, the Boeing 737NG is great airplane, it's safe airplane, so everything is okay here. But later on something was done wrong, maybe on a training or pilots did mistakes. So maybe these holes here or holes there leading to the crash. Sadly, in Fly Dubai accident case, pilots were working similar to MCAS system on Boeing 737 MAX. 
All right, it seems like I'm speaking about different things. Let's get back to Boeing 737 MAX. About the new design, my friends, what was done with the airplane itself? Uh, I have the link to FAA website, probably I'll put it in a video description down below. You may check it out. And the FAA proposed a new software for a flight control computer. That's the main thing, actually. Also, new aircraft flight manual was introduced and new max display system software here and of course new wiring that was found the wrong wiring or not safe let's say wiring was found uh, during the revision of Boeing 707 MAX it didn't lead to Lion Air or Ethiopian crash but they just redesigned it according to safe safe regulations i think the best thing here that in new software of flight control computer we have two angle of attack sensors delivering their signals to mcas and it's more safe compared to signal sensor if something will go wrong with one sensor there's the system identifying the wrong indication and the system itself it compares the signals from two independent angle of attack sensors if we have some of the different indication in those the MCAS system is disabled also we have one MCAS activation per time it means that if we move the stabilizer trim we cancel the MCAS signal to move our stabilizer and it moves just once it will not constantly move our stabilizer down with several gaps at, as it was in previous modifications great great thing and also it has limited magnitude it will not move the stabilizer trim full forward and that makes the final horizontal stabilizer position after MCAS activation will preserve the flight crew's ability to control the airplane pitch by using only the control column so even if you have the full deflection of MCAS, you still have some kind of limit. So it will not go to full position and you will be able to control the airplane. So I would say that before we had the layer with many, many holes and now we canceled some of them with this new software i'm speaking about only major changes my friends there are many 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 more you may check out check them out on faa official website or on boeing website and also it's not over my friends some of the pilot unions uh, especially in united kingdom they propose to install one more angle of tech sensor to make all the system more reliable uh, so far on Boeing 707NG we have two sensors and it's pretty much reliable so they propose it maybe they'll change Boeing 737 MAX again so far it's safe it is declared safe to fly so Boeing was revised by FAA everything was revised by different international authorities the aviation authorities uh, I think they have the outcomes of the two crashes of Lion Air and Ethiopian and it will never happen again with that MCAS system and Boeing 737 MAX. Would I fly this airplane? My friends, I would like to fly this airplane. From what I can personally see based on these changes, if we put emotions side and all the history uh, the bad history of that airplane from what i can see right now i would fly it and i think it's safe my friends based on my experience based on this knowledge i think they did what they could to make this airplane as safe as boeing 737 ng or maybe even safer of course boeing lost its reputation after two crashes of previous Boeing 737 MAX modifications and I understand that many of the passengers would not like to fly even on new modified Boeing 737 MAX and here is one more lesson for aviation industry 
that aviation safety should not be exchanged for income that human lives should be number one priority not only for pilots for airlines or maintenance organizations should be number one priority for aircraft designers and aviation authorities we are not test pilots to deal with strange aircraft designs the airplanes should not be designed for superhero pilots who deal with the problems of the aircraft the airplanes should be designed for average commercial pilots and there was no room for mistake and there is no room for mistake i hope and i'm sure that this aircraft will be safe thank you very much for watching this video my friends i know you like my channel that is why you just need to follow the awesome guy checklist so what you need to do is just to like this video then subscribe to my channel ring the bell whatever it means thank you very much for watching this video and have a great time